my view of biblical inerrancy is the international view, whereby I try to take into account the various ways in which people have spoken about and addressed the issue of the Bible's truth and authority from around the world, which involves in looking various confessional statements, doctrinal statements from evangelical churches from all across of the globe. And you notice a few things that the word inerrancy itself does not appear all that often. In fact, it's very rare. You can find some very similar things, like the uh, Lausanne Covenant uses the phrase without error. But generally speaking, the main words that have been used, at least in English-speaking places, have been words like infallible and authoritative. That's the main grammar that's being used. The major tenets of the international view is that God's word is true and trustworthy. Uh, and that is to say, uh, God has spoken, we believe it, and we obey it. Uh, the terminology we use to describe that uh, is not all that important. It's your attitude towards scripture that really counts. And whether you believe scripture is negotiable, uh, is, which is what you find, I think, in a lot of more liberal and mainline churches, or whether you believe scripture is the norming norm of theology that it's prescriptive, it's there to be adopted, and obeyed, and implemented. Factors that have shaped me holding this view have largely been a, a few things. One is just looking around at the various confessional statements around the world, seeing what kind of terminology they use, what sort of wording, what sort of affirmation and denials they make. Uh, the other thing is simply wrestling with the phenomena of scripture. What does the Bible say about itself? What is the Bible's own testimony? And if you, if you look at the Bible's own testimony to itself, uh, the, the main semantic domain of words that are used are those which pertain to truth and truthfulness. Or in other words, God's word is true and trustworthy. Uh, you then have to deal with some of the phenomena of scripture another way by looking at the genres and how does truth and truthfulness uh, relate to the fact that we have all sorts of different genres in scripture ranging from creation stories, law codes, um, Semitic poetry, gospels, epistles, and apocalypse, and understand how those all work together. Biblical inerrancy continues to be a very hot topic, particularly in North America. But the fact of the matter is I like to point out that in the rest of the world, this is not where the party's at. Now, we've had other issues to deal with. Uh, we've de or if we've dealt with the same issues, it's been in different ways and for different reasons. Rather than a battle for the Bible, more often than not, we've had a battle for survival. But wherever you go throughout the world, there's always been a believing reverence for the Bible. Now, how that works out in North America, uh, I think may be a little bit different because of the situatedness of the inerrancy discussion. But I think the debate will continue for some time in the United States and it may even become more divisive. Because we have to remember there's no single doctrine of inerrancy. Uh, what I've detected in my time, particularly through this discussion, is it's probably more accurate to speak of inerrancies. And it's going to be a matter of waiting to see if one version becomes more predominant. And hopefully what becomes predominant or becomes popular or just carries the day is one that is completely robust and can deal with the didactic statements of Scripture as well as the phenomena of Scripture itself. And that's what we really need. We do need a robust statement about the veracity of Scripture.